Hello everyone and welcome back. This here is Ripley. Yes, the little source of all my distractions in the studio. Yeah, six months old and he's already a little devil. In this week's video, in case you didn't know, we are going to be doing pet portraits. That's right, I'm going to be teaching you how to use simple techniques to create a really cool picture of your kitty or puppy dog. But before we get started, please hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so that you never miss an upload. With that said, let's get painting. So I have a 12 by 12 panel here today. It is unprimed. I'm not going to prime this one. I often don't prime my pet portraits because I like to sometimes stain the backgrounds. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this painting today, but I will leave it unprimed. So the very first thing we are going to do is sketch out our pet portrait. I usually don't do this with other paintings. I only do this with portraits because I want to make sure things are in the right place. And you know, I think it's probably best if before we actually start painting, I go check on my animals and make sure they're not lurking around the studio. Okay, it looks like they're all resting peacefully in their corners and we can get started. So if you are working with acrylics, make sure that you sprinkle some water over them so that they do not dry out. And the first thing I'm going to do is take some raw umber and just sort of find the darkest areas of my portrait and put those in. I usually start with the eyes first and then move around the rest of the painting. I recommend that you don't use black in your portraits because it can look a little flat. So that's why I am using raw umber instead. And now I'm going to come in with a little bit of color and start blocking that in. So the majority of this painting is just going to be color blocking. We are just going to be taking our lights and darks and some colors and blocking those in in various spots where they go. It's pretty much that simple. So here you can see I've started color blocking some of the warm tones, but then I'm also coming in with some of the lights to highlight. And now you can see here, I am putting in those darks. I am finding the darkest darks and the lightest lights and just putting those right in the painting. I don't want you to try blending or coating the whole dog in the same color. That's not what we're doing here. And oftentimes when you do that, it can turn out flat and then it just requires more work to get it looking right. Instead, you are just going to be color blocking the majority of this painting. So here I've started working on the eyes. I think my first layer is just going to be a light green to get some color down there. And then of course I will be putting more color over that. I'm just gonna go in really quick right here and touch up these teeth so I know where they are and I don't lose their shape. So I am just going in with my brush and putting my colors where I see them in blocks. I'm not really blending, I'm just putting them down. So here you can see I'm taking my raw umber and I'm going in and finding those dark areas and just blocking them out with that color. I'm not blending, I'm not worrying about the shape too much, I'm just getting that color down. And here I'm doing the same exact thing, but with those lights. You'll notice as you keep putting down your colors, your lights and your darks, that the painting really starts to form. So this is how I do most of my portraits. I just put down these colors uh, over on top of each other and I layer them up, layers and layers. So it does take a little bit of time, but the more you do it, the more the painting will develop. So here you've seen I've switched to dark and I'll be switching back to light and then some colors and I'm just going to keep on doing that over and over again. Don't 
be too focused on the colors themselves. By that, I mean this dog is um, a red-headed dog, so she is actually much darker than this. And I'll be changing the color later on, but right now we're focusing on those lights and those darks. We'll worry about color adjustment later on. And I'm sorry about this, guys, but I had to move the camera. It was literally right in front of me, and I could not work around it. Now, as you start to layer in those colors, you will also be able to start layering in some textures and tightening up your form and adding in some details. So as you can see here, I'm starting to tighten up the form just a little bit and do some adjustments with the highlights and add in some details. So now that I have a lot of my basic colors down, I can start going in and adding additional colors and adding more details. So here I've started working on the collar to the dog and I think I'll make it the green color um, so that it goes with the eyes. And so now I'm going to go in with some orange to brighten up the dog. I personally love higher saturated color palettes and paintings. Um, it's just my style. You don't have to do this, but I really push those colors. So if I see a red dog, I'm going to make it uh, brighter and more orange. If I see a gray or brown dog, um, depending on the shade of the brown, it's probably going to be bluer or maybe have some purple in it. I That's just my style. I prefer it. Again, you don't have to, but here you can see I am starting to brighten up the dog. So here you can see I've started adding in some smaller brush strokes. This gives the painting more details, but I'm still doing that same technique of layering in or color blocking um, the colors into the painting. I am overlapping. They're not um, really blending. They're just going right on top of each other. So I am working all over my painting. I'm making sure that my hand is just about constantly moving. I want you to practice that at home, okay? I want your eyes to always be looking at your painting in all kinds of different spots and find those areas that need improvement or touch up and move your brush around. Don't just hyper-focus on one area. So we are maybe halfway done at this point. I just wanted to take a break and show you guys what this looks like up close um, with all of these layers and layers of these brush strokes. It almost gives the appearance that I've been blending the whole time, which I haven't. But as you can see, as we build up our layers, the dog really starts to take shape and it's really starting to come along now. Now I'm going to go in and start making some adjustments and um, adding in more details here. I've decided to work on the eyes a little bit. We're going to brighten them, adding a little bit of yellow, maybe some phthalo blue in the darker areas and see if we can't um, bring some more life to those eyes. And remember to use a little bit of white in those pupils of your pet or person, whatever you're painting, um, so that their eyes have a little bit of a soul. You don't want your subject to be just this sad, dark, soulless thing staring at you. So now one of the tricks that I like to do when it comes to shadows or dark areas um, is to incorporate another color. So yes, we've used raw umber for our main dark areas, but I am now going in very lightly with a touch of blue and just overlapping some of those dark areas so that it doesn't look so flat. And now I'm adding a little bit of pink into that nose and I'll be working around the painting and finding other areas where I need to add additional colors. And so here I've taken a dry brush with a little bit of paint right at the tip and I'm lightly grazing that over the bottom lip so that it creates all these little tiny hair effects on that lower lip and I'll work that up into the snout as well.
And so now I'm going back in with some bright orange and I'm brightening up this dog even more. Now you really need to make sure that when you're doing this technique I'm showing you that your colors are pretty thin, okay? Because if you're just using really heavy acrylic paints or even oil paints without thinning them, you're not going to see the color underneath and you're just going to be layering on the colors on top of one another without really getting that translucent effect. So make sure that your colors are very, very watery when applying. So I am again going around my painting and finding those areas that need to be lightened, finding those areas that need to be darkened or softened, and I'm just taking my brush and swiping that color right on top of whatever was there before. I'm starting to add a little bit more detail here and there throughout the painting with the appearance of some hair using that dry brush technique I showed you a little while ago. And like always, I will be sure to link all of my supplies that I am using today in the description down below. So if you want to try this out, go ahead and check those out. Everything's available on Amazon. Um, for really great prices. You don't need a lot of supplies for this painting. It's just a few colors and a few brushes. So keep in mind that the longer that you work on your painting, the better it will look. So don't be discouraged if it doesn't look great at the beginning or an hour in. Remember to keep working your painting. And I'm going to put a background in this painting. I think I'm going to be doing blue because blue is complementary to orange. And whenever possible, I love working with complementary colors. If you don't know what a complementary color is, it's really simple. If you take a color wheel and you pick a color, let's say blue, across from that color on the color wheel is orange. If you say pick red, the opposite color of that is going to be green. So complementary colors are opposite colors on the color wheel. So here I'm just blocking in the background with blue. I don't really care um, about anything else right now. I'm just wanting to get this color down and we'll apply some different textures to it. Uh, later on, but we've reached that point where we could start working on the background now. So here you see I've started brightening up my pup again and really pushing those colors. And then I'm going to go in and soften up some of these lines too. I feel like some of these dark brown lines are a bit harsh. So I'm going to take a softer brown and just lightly wipe over the area to see if I can't soften them up a bit here. And now I'm going to go through the painting with a little bit of white and just add some highlights here and there. So I've decided the blue is just too vibrant, so I need to soften that up. So I've taken my phthalo blue, but I've added in some black and white to kind of desaturate that color just a little bit. And I'm going to go in with my palette knife over that with a little bit of white to give it some texture. So as you can see here, I'm taking my palette knife with a little bit of white and adding in that texture. Um, the color was just so flat that it needed help. It was, it was too flat. It didn't look right. So texture resolves that. Don't be afraid to move your canvas um, to get the angle that you need in order to make those brush strokes. And now that we've adjusted the background, I'm just going to go in with a little bit of that light color on the dog and go around my dog a little bit here to soften up her edges so that she um, pops out in front of that background a little bit more. Since she is laying on top of, this is supposed to be a blanket, um, we need to give her the appearance that she is in fact on top and that the blanket is not engulfing her. 
And now I'm adding in another very thin layer of that cadmium orange to brighten up the dog again. I'm doing this by using a very watered down color and then patting my brush so that only a little bit of pigment remains but it flows well over the top of the painting and it sort of gives it a glazing effect and I'll show you that right here. So there you go, that's a super easy way to increase the saturation of your painting. So you want to make sure that when you're painting, you're going to take a break every once in a while. It's really important to step away from your painting, take a few steps back, walk around the room, look at your painting from different angles, from farther away, so that you can really start looking at where you might need to improve in your piece. Sometimes when we're working so close to our paintings, we get lost or we get hyper-focused in an area, and it's really helpful to just stop and walk away. And now that we're starting to wrap things up a little bit here, I'm going to go back to the eyes and see if I can soften them just a little bit using a softer, um, sort of a sage green color. And now I'm going through and I'm just finding areas that need a little bit of touch up here and there or need some details added. And now I'm just taking some titanium white and touching up spots here and there that really need their highlights pushed a little. I'm just going to add in a few more details here and there, but otherwise I think we're mostly done with um, the dog part of the painting and I think I will revisit the background and add some softer textures in there. So here I'm taking my fan brush and I've just loaded it up with a similar color to that blue that's already there but I'm just lightly touching it all over on top of that white to just soften the look of the texture a little bit. All right, so here's the finished piece and I'll zoom in really quick so that you could see all the texture that's actually in here um, from all those different layers of brush strokes. And I'll be sure to link my portfolio down below in the description if you wanna take a look at that. You'll see all the different ways I've created various pet portraits throughout the years. That's it for this week, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you next week.